we like to help you all to sing along with us tonight as we have a few bars of the Liberty Boy sung by uh, that fat man. I was born and bred in the darling spot, well famed in history. Well, I would like to say that the couple are a lovely couple who had to go, who got married. <laughs> uh, Joseph was an unimportant slave who found he liked his master. I got to do a soft shoe shuffle right across the stage. <laughs> they reinforced the stage for the for the occasion as well, as far as I know. <laughs> starry, starry night. Portraits hung in empty halls. They're nothing but a pup. What's your name? <laughs> it's like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> No a man bojangles and he dance for you. Born out you. And I would do myself and I says, I'd love a box of screws. And the girl says, she says, how long do you want them? I said, I'd like to keep them if possible. <laughs> long ago, I used to be a young man. And dear Margaret remembers that for me. Hiya folks, this is Brendan Grace here. Not as well as I usually am, but I set out to do a documentary and I wanted to dedicate it to Alzheimer's dementia. And I'm glad we're going ahead with it. Even though I am not well, I'd like to be here when it's over. But I want you to enjoy it very well. I had hoped <coughs> to be in better condition doing it. But I don't have to be in better condition. You have. And the title of it is Thanks for the Memories. Love you all. Thanks for the memory of sentimental verse. Nothing in my purse and chuckles when the preacher said, for better or for worse. Taking the jacket off of the upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. And we have a high Where's chair right? here for you. Well, I think everybody recognizes who we have here in this chair. He's an amazing man. Amazing grace. Oh. Amazing grace. I recorded a song 35 years ago that I got from David Soul. It was called The Dutchman. The Dutchman's not the kind of man to keep his thumb jammed in the dam that holds his dreams in. It's actually a song which is about people with dementia. So I decided that I would re record it for the Alzheimer's Society. And I rang Nora Owen one day. Nora, the former minister, because she's connected with this uh, great society. And she said to me, you know, we have a choir here called the Forget-Me-Nots. And I said, i got to do it with the choir. If he came out and just sang the Dutchman for us, we would have been thrilled. But to be able to sing the song with him and then for that to be recorded as well and to be put on a CD was just unbelievable. The excitement of that was fantastic. And the first thing I want to say before I go any further is... And I have a plate of sandwiches. Because <laughs> I'm a diabetic and I'm afraid I'll go into a hypo. <laughs> so you stand there with the sandwiches while I'm talking. <laughs> now, and I'll have the tea out. <laughs> now, I'm going to hang you up. <laughs> So uh, we're here today, this is our third annual tea dance and we're going to sing the Dutchman with them in public for the first time ever. They're going to be absolutely thrilled, like this age group adore Brendan. The Dutchman still wears wooden shoes, 
His cabin corner patched with the love that Margaret sold him. To hear the song being recorded, being sung live with the choir, forget me nuts, I was very moved by it. And, um, and I continue to be moved by it. And the reaction from all those wonderful people in there was incredible. Long ago, I used to be a man, and dear Margaret remembers that for me. My first time, fellas, in this hotel was over 40 years ago with the great Danny Doyle. He was my hero in those days. Whiskey on a Sunday, Daisy a day. I'd say they have the kettle on. You probably have a few sandwiches with no crusts. Well, if there isn't, Willie Lochner. How are you, Willie? You're welcome to Bar. Do you miss me? Oh, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is this our lunch? Well, part of it, yeah. Ah, that's yeah. great. Right. Do you have a doggy bag? <laughs> <laughs> well, having worked with the Forget-Me-Nots, my plan now is to put on a show with the Forget-Me-Nots featuring the choir and many other artists. And those artists would be made up of friends of mine. I haven't even told the choir yet, but I'm sure they would love to do it as well. How are you, hon? Are my hands freezing? Are you up, sure? Up ah, now. good. Do you want me to hold them for a bit? I love you. <laughs> Please do. Folks, are we the luckiest choir this morning yes. to have Brendan Grace in our company? Yeah. Hey! Yeah. I'm delighted to be here among you. Thank you all for the lovely welcome. And I have a special announcement to make because the last thing we did was the recording of The Dutchman. And the natural follow-up to that would be to put on a concert in the Olympia Theatre in Dublin. Woo! That's the way it is. Fantastic news. We're over the moon. You know, for us to be singing in the Olympia, when all of the people here, you know, they used to go there and they'd go to variety shows. So for us to be a part of something like that is beyond belief. Thrills. So the big challenge is now in front of me for putting on this show, um, I just have to pull it all together with the help of my own team, Tom Kelly and Brian Keane. We're going to decide who we'll approach and how we'll approach them. Brendan, how about Sandy Kelly? I would love Sandy to do the show, and I know she'd get on extremely well. Yes. Um, you know, with, with the, the choir and, she's and a, everything she's a else. Real pro. Some of them might be otherwise occupied. They could be out of the country and that, but I, I think it'll be a case of contacting everybody to see who's available and then putting it all together. Who else is ancient, like myself? Dickie Rock would be great to do. But whether he could do it or not, because he spends a lot of time in Spain now. Does he, yeah? But then Dickie wouldn't pay the fare. He has to wait till there's a Ryanair flight. For a euro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dickie's a legend in show business, there's no question about it. Let's ask him. Yeah, why not? Won't cost us anything to find out. Well, we laugh and joke and we say the biggest problem is we have to get permission first from uh, the real boss, that's Eileen, his wife, to make sure that, uh, you know, she's trying to get him to slow down a little bit, you know, and make sure, you know, that we're not overworking Brendan. Foster and Alan. Foster and Alan would be fabulous. I'd love to have Mick and Tony. Why not I ring him? Mick is a funny guy. Where you going? Ah, how are you, Mick? Not a bother, sir. Not a fucking bother. We're still caught in the morning. Ah, yeah. Okay, well, Mick, I tell you what, I am looking at putting together a concert for uh, a choir called the Forget Me Nots. I would love if some of my own compatriots would get together and help them to put this show on. I will be back to you before the night is out. That's great, thanks, I, Mick. I, I, I give you a yes or no. Yeah, and then we, we'll also pick up a, a, a night for Mullingar. Once we're at home and you're at home, we can do that when we fucking like. And, you know, a Monday or Tuesday night is very good. It wouldn't be hard to put hoes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, Mick, keep her going. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. Thanks again. Bye,
Yeah, I'll see you before the night, though. Come on, Brendan. See you, thanks, big buddy. Well, Brendan, he's a real nostalgic man. That He loves looking back in time and people he's worked with down through the years and have another show with them. That's what Brendan likes, you know, he loves the yesteryear. I mean, you're not going to get everybody that you want to get, but if we get 80% of them or even 75, you know, you're, you're doing well. I think that's the, the task ahead. to the whole thing really. Kathleen is her name and she died in June 2016. So um, Mam was always very gregarious and full of life and um, she always had a song and a story and then as she got dementia the songs and the stories disappeared and the chat disappeared and that was the thing we missed the most was Mam's chat and we all thought well what can we do to bring Mam back to herself again and Orla who's full of ideas said um, let's form a choir and once Mam died we had a family meeting to see what could we do now because it was just too sad. You know, do we continue to come every Tuesday without ma'am? Or what do we do now? So we decided we'd keep going. So sorry. So anyway, it's very special to us because it's ma'am. There's also another special man here in the audience, I believe, as well. Pat Blood. <laughs> Five years ago, Pat made this and he also made the replica chain. I think he also made the silver chain uh, for Fingal County Council. Fingal County Council celebrated. Working with beautiful things was great, you know, because jewellery is by its nature beautiful. Being the shop in Paris Court. You know, he'd some stock in the, in the showcases and then to commission if people came in, I'd like this, that, and the other. Yeah. He'd prefer that to the just selling stock, you know, he liked working with people and that. I love the job. It was just a little paragraph about the choir and I said to Pat, God, that might be nice for you. I went down just to introduce Pat and sure I had to go down myself forevermore, you know. I enjoyed it so much. It's just such a general air of happiness and fun, good atmosphere, you know. It's one of the best things I ever did. Well, I'm sitting here thinking of how I'm going to put this thing together and help the forget-me-nots. And I approached some friends of mine in show business and one of those people who's going to help me is a friend of mine for many, many years. And that's the lovely Sandy Kelly. How are you keeping up? Hi, you're Brendan. Great to see We've you. We've been friends for a long time. We have indeed. And Thank you know, you. old friends are best. Yeah. Can you please welcome on stage, Sandy Kelly. <laughs> So you say you think about falling in love, going way out I do remember that night at the Olympia, and I remember how excited I was to, to be on your show, because that was the, the entertainment show of that And I'll era. never forget the laughter coming from you <laughs> uh, when you walked into the dressing room and saw me with no clothes on. <laughs> Brendan, that was crying. I was crying. <laughs> The real reason I wanted you to come along here today is because we're putting together a show in the Olympia Theatre. Back to the Olympia. Visiting the old times. Wow. But it's a show that's going to be put on by the Forget Me Nots Choir. Well, tell me about the choir. I, I hadn't heard about that. They're made up of people who uh, have dementia, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and their families yeah. who are helping them in the choir. And what, With me. what do you see me doing? I'll tell you, first of all, uh, you can rehearse mm -hmm. a song or two with them. Oh, that's great. And to perform it in the Olympia oh, with wow. them when the day comes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 
That would be amazing. Thank you so much. No, I'm delighted. I would, uh, Thank you. I would love you to do that. And we get to go back to the Olympia. I all these years it. later. After all these years. Yeah. <laughs> the reason we're doing it in the Olympia is that in my, in my younger days, I presented 42 shows, three series. Sunday Night at the Olympia was the name of the show. It was RTE's main show of the week at the time, back in the 80s. And uh, it was a show with dancers, comedy, specialty acts, top of the bill acts from abroad. It's a great pleasure to welcome Mr. Howard Keel. Thank you very much. I was the MC, and I did sketches, and I did comedy on the show. It was nerve-wracking because it was live. I must tell you also about a fellow. I was on my way through the, the cemetery one day, and I saw this fella, and he kneeling down. And he was down there on his knees, and he was saying, Why did you die? Oh, why did you die? Why did you have to die? Well, I felt very sorry for him, you see. And I went over, and I says to him, says, I, I beg your pardon, I says, is that your wife? He says, no, he says, it's my wife's first husband. Why did you die? Why did you die? It should turn out to be a very, very nostalgic show. And I have to say that I'm really, really looking forward to the challenge of putting it together. Well, I'm glad to be back. Are you glad I'm back? Yeah. I'm delighted to be back today. And like I promised you before, some of my dear friends will be helping put on this show at the Olympia. And one of those very special friends has been a friend of mine for many, many years. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandy Kelly. Hello, my love. How are you? Nice to see you. Can we do that again? <laughs> I want you to meet Nora over here. <laughs> Nora is our girl in charge. Lovely to meet you. everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We're doing Not Hello, everybody. Yeah. I know that uh, you've chosen a particular song. I have. Uh, what a Wonderful World. Satchmo's song. Yeah. Do you want to like it? Green. Yeah. Like it? Yeah. So it's maybe just a little bit high. Yep. And the higher octave for me. Okay. And lower, the lower octave. Should we so bring it down? Do you mind trying? Do you want to sit on you? my lap? <laughs> That's and I'll have you sing a lot. <laughs> I see trees of green, red roses too. I hear them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Will you join me? I see skies of blue and turtles white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. This song, What a Wonderful World, which I've never sung before, just seemed like a, a, an uplifting song and something that at this particular time in my life, I wanted to sing um, with them. And then when we sang it together, I just knew it was the right decision. It was the song. Yes, I think. What a wonderful world. Um. Hey. All right. Well, how are you, Carmen? I'm fine, and how's yourself? <laughs> I never recognised you with your clothes on. <laughs> so what did you think of that there, Carmen, with Sandy? Oh, very nice. I got jealous. Did you? Yeah. Where do you see what happens when I go home to Ireland? 
Well, I look forward to the choir because they're all my age group, really. <laughs> now, most of them are generally around the age group. And we get on well together and, like, we have a little bit of a mess on the bus. You're mixing, and it's the company. The company means an awful lot. I have a sister in the choir, Marino, but she's a singer. Like she sings at weddings and all them things, kind of. But like, I never sang, so I'm just a backer. <laughs> Best in the part, I know myself, I haven't got a singing voice. But like the rest of the family, not my share. That's it. Sure <laughs> that's the <laughs> Your involvement with the choir. Yes. How did it begin? Well, my husband Brian developed dementia back as far as 2007. He got oh, some what they call TIAs in his brain. And, and we began to notice little changes in him. Now, Brian was always a great singer and was still a great singer. Yes. And as the dementia developed, mm -hmm. about three and a half years ago, um, I saw an ad for a choir that is dementia friendly. And that started our life That's how with the, no, the Forget Me Nots. And then sadly, about five months ago, Brian's dementia had uh, deteriorated to the point where we had to look at full-time care. That was oh, 11 years mean? after it started. So Goodness. I cared for him and got some help in. And then last October, he went into a very, very good nursing home. And I'm very right. happy. He's very happy, very content. And I decided I was going to stay. I have a personal question to ask. Yes. Are you freezing? It's getting a bit chilly <laughs> now because you're getting cold. I'm here in a leather jacket. <laughs> The summer wind came blowing in from across the sea. It lingered there. First of all, I've known the lads for a thousand years. So Mick and Tony are coming along here to this beautiful place here, probably the dead centre of Ireland. We're here in a lovely village called Glasson and um, I'm really looking forward to the boys coming. It's a great pleasure to welcome our top of the bill tonight, Foster and Allen. Life is leading us to different places. Foster and Allen were playing together 44 years. You know, people often wonder why we sit this way on stage, you know, we stand this way, or I like say, Tony stands. But if you look at her record sleeve, even from day one, you know, it said Foster and Alan, so Foster was over Tony's head and Alan was over mine, so it confused people a bit that they didn't know which of us was which. We were out signing CDs and stuff one night and this woman came up and she said, which, which is Foster? I said, Mick said, I am. And she said to me, and who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and <laughs> where's Alan? Mick and Tony. Hey man, how are you? How are you? Do you hug? Uh, we do, we do. How are you keeping? We yeah. all need a hug. Foster yeah. and Alan. Oh, yeah, Sit down we? there, fellas. Live there. I'm delighted to see you. Good to see you. You know, we're vintage in the business. I'm yes. sorry to have to tell you. When was the first time we met? I'm trying to remember. I remember well the first time I met you in the night bite in Dublin. Uh, on the I'm, keys? On the keys. And it was the early 70s. You weren't married at the time. What year did you get married? Um. You better, you better <laughs> remember that. <laughs> well, I better because the eldest is the right age. <laughs> so that's it, Mick. We had a chat on the phone about it, and you were back to me the following day with an answer and said, Yes, no you problem. do. We can do the show and well, be delighted to do I'm it. I'm thrilled that uh, you know. will be on the bill. We'll we'll be looking forward to it. And when you sing, uh, we'll sing. Come on. Yeah, yeah. why not? You can sing as you want. Young, young and fair. And fair. Well, listen, thanks very much. Oh, and song. this series for us is called Thanks for the Memories. Oh, right. And that's the song I want to finish the show with, with the choir. Thanks for the memories. 
and then we'll all walk on and join them on the stage. It'll be great. Oh, Nostalgic. There won't yeah. be a dry eye in the house. No. That's what it's all about. So there you go. So you just can fuck off now. <laughs> <laughs> and keep fucking off. I'm from the United States of America, Massachusetts. I like Ireland. It almost feels, well, it does feel like home. I've been living here so long. I will be 92 July 11th. I plan to die sometime, but I'm in no hurry because I've got it great here. I wasn't much for jewelry. I had the wedding ring, and yet gardening, I would lose it and find it. So I thought I'll get a tattoo. That was when I was 89. And when I was 90, what are you gonna get now? And I had been in the forget-me-nots. So here's the G clef with the staff. I love being active and just living here and walking to the top of the hill behind me. That's about the extent of my high kick. Uh, living alone, people say, oh, you must be terribly. I love it. I own this house. I, I have frozen food dinners delivered. If I fall, this is my alarm. I don't know if it gives a big noise to alert anybody, or I'll just have to die. <laughs> That'll be the way to get rid of me. Morning. The fire is out, the moon is down, the parting glass is drank and done. He was diagnosed about seven years ago. It wasn't only names, it was everything. He just, really everything in life. Along the road and short of the mile before I reach Miss So. If Jim wants to go to the bathroom or something, I'd say, just go on out that door there, Jim. But he'd walk past it and you'd have to kind of come back and say, and then he'd kind of... You'd have to tell him where to go. He'd kind of have to get up to the bathroom. Keep, just keep going. That's, that's, that's... He always says you have to keep the best side out. Best side out, always. Take a girl to be a bride, nor take a man to be... Well, you could let her get you down, but then ah, yeah, they're going to be worse mean, off anyway, yeah. aren't you? Mm. So I think ah, you have yeah. to make the best of the situation. Yeah. Be thankful for the way it is, because it could be worse. Yeah, there's people worse. I will sit beside the road and weep For all the songs I did not sing And promises that I did not keep <laughs> Out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. You came along and everything started into hum. Still, it's a real good bet, the best is yet to come. We are here today in Malahide Castle in Gardens. We promised Brendan that we'd do a song with the choir and we're just on our way to meet them. Folks, on this beautiful day at Malahide Castle, can we give it up for Foster and Alan, please? How are you going? How are you? Well? Lovely to meet you. How are you? Very good. Very good. How are you? Oh, sure, look, it's not a bother, am I? So, yeah. folks, do you know the song Bunch of Time? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Are we right, so? Come on, you wait. 
diamond fair All you that are blooming in your prime Always beware That's it Keep your garden fair And no one steal away your time For time it is a precious Time brings all things to my mind. Time with all its labor, along with all its joy. Time brings all things to my mind. Hey! hey. That was amazing, and they're a very, very good choir. They really are. Nora's done a great job there. She's, she has it up to scratch big time, you know. No, thank you very much. Number one, thanks a million. Two well done singers. And looking forward to September, I think, as we're doing a concert in the Olympia. And Brendan will be there himself on the night, and uh, we'll probably sing a few more songs with him on the night, you know, and have a bit of crack, which is probably more important than. Than anything else, you know. Oh, let's let us we have it fairly nailed, <laughs> and, and, and they'll have it twice as nailed, so there'll be no problem. Thank you very much. How about it here? Good stuff. The reason I'm here at the world famous Abbey Theatre is to meet this beautiful lady here. And the last time I had the pleasure of working with Lisa Lamb was over 30 years ago in the Olympia Theatre. Are you shy? I'm not shy. I'm just small. Just small? Well, I'd like you to meet a very tiny little friend of mine who is even smaller than you. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Oh, Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? When your heart is full of love, you're nine feet tall. Brenton. Oh, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Come over to me. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. How are you, my, my darling? My pal. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear God. So you are you beautiful. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, tiny little, little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Oh, Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? All the work we did together, the impact it had on my childhood was, oh. it's, you know, it's still with me in all the craft and everything that I do. When I was doing the Bird Lives thing, I can remember I was in a dungaree. You were, yeah. And at one stage, <laughs> the battery pack that I was wearing <laughs> it went down. slipped. I remember it. Well, you know, around these here parts, there are lots and lots and lots of creatures of all types, creatures of every sort as I fix my leg. It slashed the on my leg. What? And I was I trying to fix song. this I battery for it, the apparatus, <laughs> trying to cover up for the fact <laughs> that here I am trying to interfere with old, myself. We have that on an old VHS tape at home. We're back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> and uh, the Forget Me Nots choir um, is the choir from Alzheimer's. the Alzheimer's yeah. and dementia people. Mm. And they make up this beautiful choir. And it's for them that I'm putting this show together. Would you be part of the show for me? <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. Uh, oh. so I'd like us to give a really warm welcome to Lisa Lamb, folks. Yeah. 
so welcome. Thank you for coming. I am so thrilled to be here. I feel like an honorary member of the Forget Me Nots, if that's okay to say. <laughs> Tell us about the song you've chosen. Yes, well, I've chosen one of my own favourite songs called Bright Blue Rose. Oh. I skimmed across black water without one submerging on to the banks of an urban morning that hunger first life much more than the mountains ever do. She, like a ghost beside me, flows down the knees of dawn. The music was incredible this morning, um, and it shows the power of it, and to see people's faces come alive and to share that experience with them was really special. The harmonies are amazing. Um, the arrangement by Nora is beautiful. It's gorgeous. I don't want to leave, to be honest. <laughs> Come on, boys. For all of you who must discover, for all to see, to understand. They are an incredible bunch of people. A really, really special morning. I'm completely... Ah, oh, I'm buzzing. It's so good. Jimmy McCarthy. <laughs> the voice of Joe Cuddy. Woo we were very lucky in this choir to get all these celebrities out to sing with us, you know. Now to have Joe Cuddy joining us. Yeah, it's great. Have we got a good choir tonight? Frank, if you give me a card of B, I'll flatten this myself. I close my eyes to back the curtain to speak or what I thought of you. This is a fantastic thing for people with dementia like myself. I, I didn't think I'd be asked to get up and sing, so I would have done, done a few scales this morning. <laughs> It's a long time I stood up and got a slap after being bad. <laughs> oh. It's more than just a choir. It's, it's a whole social circle, isn't it? It's, yeah, uh, it is, definitely. It's the camaraderie and, and so on. And the, the, the forging of new friendships. You know, I, I've, in the last year, I've lost all my surviving long-term friends. But I've acquired all new friends in the forget-me-nots. Yeah. It's remarkable, yeah. you know, even at, even at 89 years of age to acquire new friends. And then you, the people coming in with their, their husbands or wives with dementia and that, you know. And even when they pass on, the, uh, the, whoever's left comes back to the choir. Since we were last down here, unfortunately my mum has passed away. She passed away only last week and it was from dementia and cancer and it was very peaceful in the end for her. She didn't really suffer. But part of her life for the last year and a half to two years was actually to choir here in Baldoyle, forget me nuts. The work they do down here with people with dementia and stuff like that, it's amazing. And it made the family so happy knowing that my mother took part in that. Perhaps Morris, you'd like to say a word uh, or two about Carmel? Thanks, Nora. Thank you. My mother, a year and a half ago, never sang in her life. But till she came down here, she loved it down here. We can't thank you enough for what you have done for my mother over the last year and a half. So on behalf of the Murphy family, thank you very much. And thank you, Nora. It's been Thanks, a pleasure sir. to know you, sir. In memory of Karma, we'd like to sing a song that we think she would have liked, and it's Whispering Hope.
very special night, not just for me, but for people watching the show, because we have the Forget Me Nots choir appearing on stage with me, singing a couple of their songs and a couple of my songs. Hiya, Brendan. Hello, huh? Well, I got a surprise phone call from Brendan, and he had an idea that we could perform with him tonight in the concert hall. And it was like, oh my God, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here to the National Concert Hall in Dublin. All these young people are here with me. Are we ready? Yes. yes. I'd say you are. Okay, Brian, whenever you like. Let us go to the banks of the ocean. great sense of focus and a nice relaxed atmosphere as well and a great degree of anticipation about what the night was going to be like. But, uh, we still don't know the words. <laughs> At that age I think I'm entitled to some forgetting. 900 people plus out there and you know the concert hall is just such an incredible venue for us to sing at. It's really getting famous now isn't it? Being here with Brendan Grace at his show. You sound great. Go out and have fun. Enjoy. In the interest of safety, we would ask you to note the position of the exit nearest where you are now seated. <laughs> there are, in all, ten exit doors from Look the concert hall, like all of which are clearly marked. In the unlikely event Ooh, of an emergency, please move calmly to the nearest door. Gentlemen, people, woman, arms, press on the chair. Press on the Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome tonight, ladies and gentlemen. These are all my relations <laughs> who wouldn't buy tickets. <laughs> so I came up with a plan. I said, why don't you be <laughs> pretend you're the choir? <laughs> the forget-me-nots, ladies and gentlemen, here. <laughs> Sing too badly either, I think. Asha, he's brilliant. He relaxes everybody. What a lovely gig. Where would you get an ending like that with a standing ovation? I'm thrilled. And at the very end, a lady came out and her name was Eileen. Come over to me. My darling wife came out on stage and she made the night for me. Oh. Thank you, darling. I love her. How lucky can we be? Do you love me? I do. Say it without laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be anywhere. <laughs> Just to get out of the house. 
But well, um, I'm delighted to be over and to see you all again. Our last uh, professional appearance in the concert hall, the reaction that we got from that show was incredible. I think you all enjoyed it too. Yeah. We started in the concert hall. We're now going to the Olympia. <laughs> We're having fun doing it as well. And I have to say that I'm thrilled to be a part of, of this. Nothing phases these people. Like, if you told them they were singing for the opening ceremony of the Olympics and they were going to be watched by several hundred million people, they'd think that was grand, you know? Nothing really phases them. They've seen it. They've done that, you know? But they're excited about the prospect and they're interested and engaged. This crowd are so up for it. They, they would put everyone to shame, so it is a big ask, but I'm definitely sure they're up for it. But a ton of work to do. But people are so enthusiastic, you know, Nora will decide which songs do we work on each week. We will get there, there's no question about it. Sure there isn't. <laughs> it's always right on the night. We're yeah. never quite sure how it works out, but it does. Okay, no, to you. There you go. skies of blue. I don't make promises, but I, I, I certainly have hopes and dreams. And I think that this is going to hammer home to people the importance of dementia. And um, I, life has been very good to me. I've, my family life has been great. Did you ask me that question? No, no but you can answer it. No, life has been very, very good to me. And my darling wife, Eileen, and, and I have been soulmates all these years and we have we had the four children now three grandchildren but the one word that stays in my mind and it comes from my my father and mother you know years ago and it's a word you never hear nowadays the word is content you don't hear people saying i'm content i'm content thank god Great. How, are you? How are you, Paul? In all the old and me all. I know what you were expecting. You were expecting someone older. <laughs> One of them said to me, are you Joe Dolan? <laughs> we came home and my first protocol was a visit to Uthron Hearn. Brendan, don't get on at all. I have to stand Uthron. I am so, Great to so see delighted you. to see you. Following morning, Eileen drove me here, <coughs> and they discovered somewhere here was a cancer. I'll find you in the morning sun, and when the night is through, I'll be looking at the moon. But I'll be seeing you.